Hi, this is Brian Smith. Today is video number 13 in my Linux video series, and today we're going to talk about DriftNet. If you haven't heard of DriftNet, it's a, uh, a network sniffing uh, utility, but it's kind of unique in that what it does is it looks at network packets that are traversing the network, and it'll decode those packets and see if there's any images within those packets, like JPEG uh, pictures. And if so, what it'll do is it'll It'll extract those out of the packets and display them on your screen real time. So if you have a, uh, a link with a lot of uh, internet traffic going through it, you can pull those images out and display them in real time um, to monitor the network. So um, what we're going to do today is demo this. And this is our lab environment we're going to use today. So we have a laptop that's wirelessly connected to a wireless router. This wireless router is plugged into this server here. The server has dual network interface cards. We have ETH0 and ETH1. The wireless router will be plugged into ETH0. And ETH1 will be plugged into our internet connection. The server is running Kali Linux, which is a, uh, a security-focused version of Linux, which happens to include DriftNet by default. And what we're going to do here between these two interface cards is create a network address translation bridge using IP tables so that when this traffic comes from the laptop through the wireless router, it'll um, go in here and be bridged over these two network cards and then out to the internet. Now that's one important thing you have to keep in mind when using DriftNet or any other network sniffer, is that you have to have access um, to see the network traffic somehow. Um, so in our case, we're going to have this dual uh, NIC bridge so that the traffic will be flowing through our uh, Linux server here. Um, there's a, several ways you can do this. You, if you have a managed switch, you could set up port mirroring or a span port. If uh, you have a hub, you can connect all the devices into a hub, which will create one broadcast domain so that all the uh, computers on that hub see each other's traffic. So there's several ways to do it. We're just going to use this, um, this method for this demo. All right, one other thing to keep in mind with uh, DriftNet and other uh, sniffing applications is um, DriftNet will only be able to pull out those pictures for plain text um, HTTP um, protocol. So if you go to a HTTPS, um, which is a SSL or TLS uh, encrypted connection, DriftNet won't be able to show those images because the traffic's encrypted, so it can't access um, the information within those en encapsulated encrypted packets. So. Just one thing to keep in mind, this will only work on those plain text HTTP protocols. So, all right, let's go ahead and move over to the uh, demo and we'll show how this thing works. Okay, so we're here on our Kali Linux server and the first thing we need to do is set up that network address translation bridge within IP tables. And so what we're gonna do to do that is run a few commands here. And I went ahead and just typed them up to make this a little bit easier. So we're gonna use sysctl to set the IP forward um, to one, which enables it. And we're gonna run these three IP, t IP tables commands. These will basically enable NAT or network address translation and forward the traffic from ETH0 to ETH1. And I'll include these commands in the comments of the video um, for your reference. So I'll go ahead and run that, which will go ahead and set up IP tables and set that sysctl parameter. And now our traffic will be, the bridge will be active and what we'll need to do is go ahead and run DriftNet. So we'll do DriftNet dash I ETH0 and this will tell it to listen um, for traffic on ETH0. So I'll go ahead and run that. And that'll bring up this new window here and I'm gonna maximize that. Okay, and basically what will happen is this is where it'll show the images that it sees on the, on the network. So let me zoom out here a little bit Okay, so here, here we have the, uh, the laptop that's wirelessly connected, and I'm on eBay, and I'm just going to do a search for Linux, and press enter here, and what you can see happening here is as the images load in my web browser over that network link, DriftNet is pulling those out and displaying those images on the screen. If I do another, uh, another search, Let's search for uh, Kali Linux. Again, you can see those images 
that were uh, coming over this network link are now being displayed by DriftNet. There's a search for Ubuntu, you can see, see the images loaded. Now another cool thing you can do with DriftNet is if you don't want to display them on the screen and instead you want to save the images to a file, um, DriftNet supports that as well. Just check the, uh, the man page for it, um, for the parameters to do that. So I hope you found this uh, overview and demo of DriftNet helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. If you found this video uh, useful, please subscribe. I'll be coming out with some more uh, content. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys all have a great day today.